What's up, pretty much? Now, I hope you're ready for this story time. But as you know, I live in Colombia. I gotta get that out the way. I have no idea why black women are coming to Colombia until I ask. But that was after this. There was one time I went to Cartagena. I'm very much known there. I went on my favorite trip, which is the Shalom trip. And I went by myself. I'm having a great time. Music is blasting. The women look good. I look to my right, there is a group of black women. Had to be about nine to 11 of them. So deep down in me, I was like, I gotta make sure they're good. That's just naturally within me. They're in a whole nother country. They don't speak the language. And they don't know that in Shalom, those guys aim for the women so they could take advantage and take money from them. So I went to them and told them about the prices. Told them, hey, make sure you get the prices and write them down. Because at the end, they will throw some extra 100,000 pesos on you. And you have nothing to use as proof. I connected with one of the girls. She was really cute. We was talking. We was kind of caked up. Bill came for the table. You can tell everything I said was coming true. So they come to me and say, why do they overcharge on this? I was like, I told you. Get the prices. Stop getting so belligerent drunk and get the prices. So me being the person that I am, I reach into my bag and give them 300,000 pesos. That's 75 US dollars. Now US, that's not a lot. But in Colombia, that's big time. I said, don't worry about it. Take this. You know, they grabbed it. One of them said, thank you. The other ones looked at me like, oh, this is what you should do and is, it's giving. Well, I was by myself at Shalom. I realized I don't know how I'm getting back because the tour I was with kind of dipped. I asked the group, I said, can I talk to whoever is running y'all boat? I will pay them and they can take me back to shore. And that's what I did. I went to the captain. I paid him 250,000 pesos, which is about a 50, about $60. And I sat in the front right next to the cutie, right? So we're just chopping it up, but then I can see across, something was brewing. Their total bill came, and it was like 1.2 million, like $300. And I'm just sitting up there by myself, and I notice the men are in the back, but I'm the only man in the front. One of the girls starts looking at me. She said, why are you here? And I was like, I just paid to be on this boat so I can go back to shore. She was like, you see these women over here stressed about this bill, and you ain't going to do nothing about this? What? I didn't even know I had to do that. So then she starts going on. In my mind, I'm just like, does she know she in Colombia? I can uppercut you right now, then pay the boat off, and nobody will even know. Oh my God, he hit me. I'm going to stop him right there. Buddy's pretty funny. It looks like he's like cutting it every sentence he says. So it's a bunch of cuts right there. But yeah, it's isn't it funny to see that patriarchy is still a thing in some countries? But it doesn't matter where you go. And I, I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of black women are traveling more. American black women are traveling more and going on these girls trips and things like that. But they still maintain this U.S. attitude. Doesn't matter if it's a foreign man or if it's a guy from the States like this gentleman right here who's been living in Columbia. He tried to look out for the sisters and they already given him lip. The entitlement is ridiculous. But like he said, they don't know any better. He could really do that because women in America are trained to basically say they can say whatever they want out of their mouth. Nobody can check them at the end of the day. Nobody can talk to them any type of way, especially a black man. And you're in a foreign country and you think that, hey, in other countries, a woman wouldn't dare do stuff like that. This is one of those things. I'm interested to see where this story is going to go. Let's get back to it and see what happens. No, he did it because I paid everybody. But no, I just sat there and took it. Then the chick I was talking to looks over and was like, you know, if you got it, you could have just paid it. And I'm like, word. They were like, well, you're the man. I'm the man. I got to pay your $300 bill. I just met y'all and I gave y'all 75 earlier and I just met y'all. She was like, well, if you ain't going to add in, then you're going to get off our boat. I was like, I'm not getting off shit. So all the girls around it. Shout out to the one queen. There was one that stood up and said, wait, hold on. He did help us out a lot. Man, they shut her down quick. You know how the herd mind is. If you ain't agreeing with them, you and I, that girl's girl thing is a lie. They sent her in the back of the boat too. So I'm sitting up there uncomfortable. I got a bunch of ratchets going on, talking under the breath about me. They was like, you better get off my friend. So I put my arm away. And in my mind, I'm just like, I got to get off this boat. I don't want to crash out. She's like, you got to go to the back of the boat. I was like, I ain't going nowhere. I paid to be here. This is our boat. Well, actually, you haven't paid your bill. So after that, liquor sat in. The boat ride from Shalom to Cartagena is an hour long. You know where I'm getting. The liquor is sitting in. I got to use the bathroom. So I'm thinking in my mind, I got to stand up with all of these hyenas already upset with me because I'm not paying their bill. 
But it got to the point where I was like, I gotta really use the bathroom. And there's no bathroom on the boat. So you gotta use it in the ocean. So I gotta stop the boat. I got to the point I needed to go. I went up to the guy and said, hey, look, I'll give you an extra 100,000 pesos to stop the boat. And I gotta use the restroom. They was like, bet, I mean, these are Colombians. They gonna stop. 100,000 pesos? Are you serious? Shoot. I used the bathroom. Wait, let me back up real quick. I accidentally stumbled. Remember the boat was moving. That same girl that's pissed that I did not, because she was like the ringleader. She was like the ring leader. She was like, he fell on purpose. Who the fuck falls on purpose on a moving boat? And then that same girl that stood up for me before was like, no, he's an accident. They shut her down quick. After I used the bathroom, I sat in the back and I was like, I just gotta, I gotta tell the world about this. And I just kept my mouth closed until now. So I don't know why black women are coming to Colombia, but I think they're coming to Colombia for the same shit in the States. They're looking for men to pay for their shit. And I've heard from other guides, they're coming to give men an option in Colombia. You can either fuck with the Colombians or them. And to be honest, nobody fucking with them. We don't want them. And this doesn't go for all, you know, black women, <laughs> just American ones. Shout out to Kenya. But that was the day that I officially said no more. I will never date, never take serious, never even share my resources. When I see them now in Cartagena, I'm like, burn. And I'm gonna let them get taken advantage of. I'm sorry. But now for you, if you guys need help, I got you. Shout out to that brother there. No good deed goes unpunished. And he used a lot of words that a lot of the ladies wouldn't like, like hyenas, ratchets, and things like that. But hey, it's the entitlement. And once again, like I said, a lot of black women in the States feel like they can't be checked, right? You cannot say anything to them. They cannot be chastised or anything like that. They're always in the right. And like you said, ladies, and I know a lot of you ladies will lose friends if you try to not go along with the herd mindset, the hive mindset, if you will. And you're considered an op if you go against any one of them. And it's almost like you have to, if you want to keep a friend, you have to agree with everything they say, which is crazy. And women will lie and say, no, that's not the case. Nah. Nah, you're going to lose friends unless you go along with that same toxic mindset. This is a guy that helped them out. So it's a lot of dudes are being turned off. A lot of dudes are being turned off, even in other countries. And you, you think that a black woman is beautiful, first of all, right? But it's the attitude and her ways. And she's, she's fallen from grace that she once was especially with these 70s, 80s, and 90s babies. Going into 2000s, you're just raising them to the point where they just are disrespectful. They don't care about the authority of the black man and say he has no authority, but yet still you want him to protect you. How can you expect security and protection from a man that you don't respect? Especially a random stranger that was coming out of his pocket to give you some money. It's crazy. I, I don't understand that, folks. I don't. But he did the right thing. I probably would have, eh, I'm not going to say what I would have did, man. But, uh, <laughs> yo, this is wild. Guys, have you ever experienced something like this? Comment below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Much blessings in abundance. Stick around for the next videos. It's going to pop up on the screen below. That's where I'm going to see you guys at. Listen, it's your favorite everything. This is wisdom. Let's run it up to one million. I'm the best. Quit playing with me. Peace.